my pain. You don't know what I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my brains. Don't try to figure it out because my worship, my worship, it is the
Good morning. Come on and say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand today. Amen. amen. Come on, all over the sanctuary. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. I see we have cotton. We're going back, look like. Yeah, you look like y'all are going back. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to tell the Lord thank you today for how the Lord has blessed us as a race of people. Oh, his hand is in it. Amen. We are probably the most resilient people on the face of this earth. Amen. We can enjoy steak and we can enjoy hog malt. But give God the credit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to worship the Lord today. Amen. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and, with a, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Amen. That's uh, Psalm 95, selected verses. May the Lord continue to bless the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend Bobby Smith to lead us in prayer this morning. Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal God of our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for last night's lying down in this early morning of Christ. Now, Lord, here we are at the beginning of our service. Pray, Father, that thou will consecrate us now. Set us apart from ourselves and let your Holy Spirit have his way. Master, we realize we can't do nothing without you. Yeah. But with you, God, we can do all things. And Lord, we said thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we said thank you right now. Lord, we realize that without you, nothing will be possible. But with you, all things are possible. Lord, we thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for moving the pains in our bodies. Thank you for regulating our heart. Lord, we thank you today for you've been so good to us. Father God, we pray for every church door that stands open in your name this morning that thy will will be done. Pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to move in this building that they would unlock unstop their thieves allow the mouth to praise you for master we are not here for no show form or fashion but we come this morning that we may praise your name have your way this morning Lord in the name of Jesus touch right now like only you can touch in the name of Jesus, heal right now. Set the captive free. 
Let some soul come crying out, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we said thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your presence. Bless the choir as they sing. Bless the man of God that's going to bring your word. Speak, Lord. Touch, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes, God. Yes, God. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes, Wait, yes, yes. Come on, y'all know this one, so I want y'all to sing along with us. It's an oldie but goodie for us. And I want y'all to sing it along with us. Lift your voice. Say, all hell. All hell, the king of Abraham. You know, you know it. Come on, sing it with us. All hell. All hell, the great I am. Come on, that's it. The only king who died. The only king who died and rose again. Come on, sing it. The only king. The only king who reigns will never
one can beat our God. Yeah. No one can kill our God. No one can dethrone our God. Because he reigns forever and ever. Any witnesses out there? Come on, say it with us. No one can beat us. No one can beat him. Come on, say no one can kill us. No one can kill us. No one can dethrone us. No one can dethrone us.
principles known as Negro spirituals derive from our African heritage with the experiences of being held in bondage and slavery. Spirituals encompass the sing song, work songs, and plantation songs that evolved into the blues and gospel songs in church. While they are often rooted in biblical stories, they are often described no, they also describe the extreme hardships endured by African Americans who were enslaved from the 17th century until the 1860s. Prior to the end of the U.S. Civil War and emancipation, spirituals were originally an oral tradition passed from one slave generation to the next. Biblical stories were memorized, then translated into songs. Following emancipation, the lyrics of spirituals were published in print form, ensembles such as the Fist Jubilee Singers, established in 1871, popularized spirituals, which are still sung to this day. Over the years, people have recognized Negroes for their rhythm and ability to sing. There are many different ways to relate to song, but Paul Lawrence Dunbar has made it easier for people to get the real meaning of music and song. He has put it into poetry. Most any kind of music can lift your spirits, but nothing like the way it does when you hear Melindy Sing by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Get away and quit that noise, Miss Lucy! Put that music book away. Well, there ain't no use in trying if you practice till you're gray. You can't start no notes of flying like the ones that rants and rings from the kitchen to the big woods when Melinda sings. You ain't got the natural organs for to make the sound come right. You ain't got the turns and twists for to make it sweet and light. Tell you one thing now, Miss Lucy, and I'm telling you for true, when it comes to railroad singing, take no easy thing to do. Now it's easy enough for folks to holler looking at the lines and dots when there ain't no one can sense it and the tune comes in at spots. But for real melodious music, that just strikes your heart and clangs. Just you stand and listen with me while Melinda sings. Ain't 
Ain't you never heard, Melinda? Well, blessed soul, take up the cross. Look here, ain't you joking, honey? Well, you don't know what you lost. You ought to hear that gal a wobbling, robins, locks, and all them things. Hesh they mouths and hides they faces when Melinda sings. Fiddling man, just stop his fiddling, honey, lay his fiddle on the shelf. Mockingbird, he quits trying to whistle because he's just so shamed himself. Folks are playing on the banjo, drops they fingers on the strings. Bless your soul, forgets to move them <laughs> when Melinda sings. She just spreads her mouth and hollers, come to Jesus. Then she turns to rock, rock of ages. Simply to the cross she clings, mm -hmm. and you find your tears are dropping when Melinda sings. Who that says that humble praises with the master never counts? Hush your mouth, I hear that music as it rises up and mounts. Floating by the hills and valleys, way above this barren sod, as it makes its way in glory to the very gates of God. Oh, it's sweeter than the music of an educated band, and it's dearer than the battle song of triumph in the land. It seems holier than evening when the solemn church bell rings as I sit and calmly listen while Melinda sings. Towser, stop that barking, hear me? Mandy, make that child keep still. Don't you hear the echoes calling from the valley to the hill? Let me listen. I can hear through the brush of angels' wings, soft and sweet. Swing low, sweet cherry. Now that's Melindy. My name is Jordan Alvarez, and on behalf of the Youth and Fine Arts Ministries, we welcome you to take a brief look at our ancestors' journey from slavery to emancipation, and to celebrate the trailblazers who have helped us achieve the freedom that we enjoy today. Beth Eden family, walk with us as we present 106 years ago, Frederick Douglass and the Emancipation Proclamation. My name is Mrs. Anna Murray Douglas. Born in 1813, I was an American abolitionist member of the Underground Railroad and the first wife of American social reformer, Frederick Douglass. We married in 1838 and had five children. I was born free, though Frederick was born a slave. I helped him gain his freedom and 600 others until God called me home. My name is Lewis Henry Douglas. I was an American military sergeant. Oldest son of Frederick Douglass and his first wife, Anna Marie Douglas. Not only did I fight for my country, but I served injustice until uh, God called my name. 
My name is Annie Douglas. I am the beloved daughter of Anna and Frederick Douglas. Although I was stricken with the play at Elim, I helped my mom welcome and feed runaway slaves and their youngins. My name is Charles Raymond Douglas. I was the youngest son of Frederick and Ann Douglas. I was the first African-American male to enlist in the military in New York during the Civil War. I am a slave. I became an outspoken advocate for freedom, civil, and women's rights in the 19th century. This work earned me an invitation to meet the President Abraham Lincoln in 1864. I am. Sojourner Truth. Can't you hear Miss Faustina in the fields? Soon will be done with the trouble of the world, trouble of this world, trouble of this world, oh, oh soon we'll be done with the troubles of the world. I'm going home to live with my love. Oh, oh, oh. I want to see my savior. I want. To see my blessed Savior, I want, oh Lord, I want to see my Savior. I'm going home to live. I'm going home just to live. I'm going home to live with my Lord. My name is Rosita Douglas Bragu daughter of Anne Mary Douglas and Frederick Douglas. I was an American teacher, activist, and a founding member of the National Association for Colored Women. Throughout my adult life, me and my brothers Charles worked along our parents to publish national newspapers regarding inequality. My name is Frederica Douglas Perry. I was an abolitionist and I gave a lot of money. I'm also the founder of the Colored Big Sister Homes in 1934 in Kansas City, Missouri.
Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this teacher's journey. Walk with my mother, Lord, walk with me. You walk with my mother, Lord, walk with me. While I'm on this teacher's journey. Augustus Washington Bailey, known as Frederick Douglass, was believed to be born in February 1817 or February 1818. He later chose February 14th as his birthday because he remembered that his mom called him his little Valentine. He was an American social reformer, abolitionist, orator, writer, and statesman. He became the most important leader of the movement for African American civil rights in the 19th century and the Emancipation Proclamation. President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1863 as the nation approached its third year of, bloody, of the bloody Civil War. The proclamation declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are henceforward shall be free. This proclamation became legal as the nation approached its third year of the bloody Civil War. The life of Frederick Douglass is too extensive to cover in a small time frame, but we not yeah. but we must not forget his sacrifices and contributions. Other abolitionists such as Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman also are credited for the success of the emancipation. After Frederick Douglass' death in 1895, Harriet continued to fight for equal rights for African Americans and st and stand up until she died in 1913. Cross I became known as Harriet Tubman and the Black Moses. I led over 700 slaves to freedom, networking, working with Frederick Douglass and networking social houses and safe houses known as the Underground Railroad. During the American Civil War, I was an armed scout and a spy for the Union Army. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a bullet in my spine. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head. Just in case I have to run. I do what I can when I can while I can for my people. Yeah. While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night, that's when I'm gonna stand up. Take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Gonna keep on keeping on. 
Can't you hear Miss Marion in the fields? Can't you hear Miss Marion in the fields? Singing that all spiritual. I've been buked and I've been born. Yes, I've been buked and I've been scorned children I've been buked and I've been scorned I've been talked about shows you born ain't gonna lay my legend down Oh no, I ain't gonna lay my religion down. Children I ain't gonna lay my religion down. I ain't gonna lay my religion down. This concludes our Black History emphasis as we end out with a slide presentation of Frederick Douglass. Right. One day. Frederick Douglass, orator, reformer, author, statesman, husband, father of five, grandfather, and great-grandfather. This great man was born a slave but died a free man, a friend and ally to President Abraham Lincoln. Frederick Douglass was a catalyst of change that freed slaves and gave a voice to the voice. Under his leadership, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by President Abraham Lincoln, which freed all African-American people. To this day, 
His powerful voice echoes along the other voices from other freedom advocates such as Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman. Today, Sunday, February the 25th, we honor and celebrate Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, orator, reformer, author, Good morning. Good morning. I feel like we've already had a welcome. The Young People's Department has done a great job of welcoming Amen. us with a wonderful presentation. Let's give them one more hand. Thank you so much. Well, again, good morning. We are here at 3208 Wilbarger Street at the Beth Eden Baptist Church in sunny South Fort Worth, Texas. And I am Faustina. I'm here um, on behalf of the Courtesy Ministry to welcome you. If we have anyone uh, joining us online, any visitors joining us online, you are welcome. And we'd like to hear from you. If you would, please fill out that brief guest survey form that's on the website under the resource tab under forms. And just let us know about your um, experience here today at Beth Eden. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're a guest joining us for the first time here in the sanctuary, we want to recognize you as well. Would you please stand? Amen. Amen. We promise we won't ask you to speak. We just want to hear your, see your beautiful faces. Amen. <laughs> Great. So on behalf, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so on behalf of our interim pastor, Reverend Earl Bryce, our entire Beth Eden family. We want to extend a hearty welcome to each of you, both online and present. Um, our doors stand wide open. There are many churches that you passed by today and you yeah. could have stopped by, yeah. but you chose Beth Eden and we are grateful for that. Amen. We hope that there's something that is said in the preached word, um, in songs or the other ministries that inspires you, touches your heart and inspires you to come back and visit with us again. Thank you so much for coming and you may be seated. And our thought for the day is, if you really wanna be like Jesus, be the one who stays when others walk away. Be the one, be the, yeah, be the one who um, helps others when others betray you. Because that's really who Jesus is. Amen. Um, and now I think it's time for our ministry minute. Amen. What's up, Beth Eden? This is Kendrick Mead giving you what you need for BEBC's ministry minute. To get this thing started with our weekly reminder. On Wednesday at 7 p.m., we will have women's and men's meetings and Bible study. On Thursday, we will have prayer for the church at 12.30 p.m. On Sunday, we will have Sunday school at 9 a.m. for youth and adults. But if you aren't able to make it in person, then we have online classes available for the adults. Little Tykes, come on down for Little Saints Nursery, which will be open at 10.30 every Sunday except for the third Sunday. Bring them on in so they can learn about the Lord in their own little bitty way. You can find access to all this information on our website under the announcements tab. Special happy birthday shout out to all those celebrating birthdays this week. Happy birthday to you. And a special happy anniversary to those celebrating love this week as well. Happy, happy anniversary.
The Health Ministry Ask a Nurse session on hypertension will be tonight at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. This is a short but informative virtual workshop that focuses on hypertension or high blood pressure and how to successfully manage it. You will be able to ask a nurse questions such as, how do I talk to my physician about my blood pressure? When will I be able to stop taking this medication every day? What can I do to improve my blood pressure? How often should I take my own blood pressure? You can find access to this information on the screen or you can go on our website under the announcements tab. If you have any more questions, please contact our ministry leader, Sister Laverne Campbell. Additionally, the health ministry would like all Beth Eden members to fill out a health survey. This health survey will assist the BEDC health ministry in providing service to you. The health survey is completely anonymous and is to be completed by each church member. Children are welcome. It will be available until February 26, 2024, 12 midnight. You may use this QR code to access the survey. Members who prefer a paper copy should text to Laverne Campbell. A copy will be made available. Thank you for your cooperation. Women's History Month starts off this week, and the women of Beth Eden, aka Woby, have a lot in store this month. It all kicks off this Saturday, March 2nd, at the Jubilee Theater to see Bread and Gravy at 3 p.m. The tickets are $32, and the deadline to purchase through the church is today. So if you haven't already, you can see Sister Henderson to pay cash or pay online via Zelle and PayPal. Use BethEden3208 at yahoo.com to make the online payment and make sure to put Moby in the memo line. Let me know what it's for. And on the next week, March 9th at 12 p.m., Moby is also hosting a spring reef design class. Clearly, they have so much going on. So if you can't participate in all of it, at least try to make one. You're sure to be blessed because Wobi does it big every single year. As always, if you have any questions, please contact Sister Jaretta Henderson. The food bank will also be open Tuesday, February 27th. So if you or anyone you know is in need, please stop by. This has been Kendrick Mead giving you what you need for BEDC's Ministry Minute. I want to leave you with a thought. Fostering mental health awareness is not just a necessity, but a cornerstone in building healthier, more compassionate communities. God have a blessed week. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 reminds us that if you give generously, you will gain more and more than you ever imagined. But if you hold back, you shall be holding back on your own blessing. Why don't we give generously? Here at Beth Eden, we have four ways for you to do just that. The first, text the word CONTRIBUTE in all caps to 73256. Or you could go on our website and click the donate tab or give through Zelle or Rail Connect. The third way, you can make a visit to Beth Eden on Sundays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and do a contactless delivery. And fourth, you could go ahead and use the courier of your choice. Mine would be United States Postal Service. And go ahead and mail in that gift. 3208 Wheelbarger 76119. However you choose to give, remember, give generously. Don't hold back. Now let's enjoy the remainder of our worship service. Let us come. While we come this morning, let us be reminded that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. We're thankful for what our God, how our God loves us, and how much he does love us. Amen. We're thankful as we're coming, we're thankful for our fine arts department. Let's give them another hand, amen, as we prepare for. Oh, we've got a lot to be thankful for, amen. We're probably amongst, if not the most resilient people on the face 
of the earth, but it's because of our God, because of our Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come this morning again to say thank you. We thank you, Father, that you, uh, by just the fingertip of your love, you touched us this morning and our eyes flew open. We say thank you this morning, Father, for who you are. We praise you and thank you, Father, for we realize that you are the superintendent of the universe. We thank you, Father, that you are in charge. And we thank you, Father, that lest we forget, you know all that goes on at this single moment. And you know all of what's going to go on tomorrow and the next day. Father, so we come and we bless your name today, Father. We come, Master, right now as we... Uh, we lift up our families that are going through bereavement. We ask, Lord, that you would give them strength today. We pray, Master, those that are on the road traveling, that you would give them uh, traveling grace right now, Lord. Bless their families. Enable them to come together. Uh, bring them that they might realize that they need to be on one accord, Lord. We say thank you, Father, that even through death you realize, we realize that we're not here always and that we need to be preparing for a hereafter. Oh, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you right now, Master. And so, Father, we lift up each and every member of Beth Eden and every church that stand open in your name right now, Lord. We pray, Master, right now as... Uh, we pray for each and every church, each and every body of Christ right now, all across this land and across the universe. Lord, this is a time that you are calling us to make a stand, Father. This is a time that you enable us, you want us to shine, Father. Because the world needs to see you, Father. But they need to see you in us, Lord. We come, Master, as we realize that, and we realize that, that as we stand in our own intelligence, stand in our own power, that we're really nothing, Father. But we come right now, Master, asking that you would stand with us, and we realize that we need your anointing each and every day. We need your power, Father. Help us, Master, that we might uh, be able to let our light shine right now, Lord. Then, Father, we pray for each and every member that have procedures, uh, each and every one that's going through treatments, those that are going through that are waiting for uh, special situations, Lord, transplants and, and, and the like, Father. We pray, Master, that uh, we know that you are a healer, Lord. But we also know, Lord, that uh, oftentimes we need our faith healed. Many times we need our, 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 our minds regulated and our, our hearts to be strong, Lord. And so, Father, we come right now asking that you would create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us, Father. Lord, we need you right now, Father. We pray, Master, right now for our churches, Lord. Enable us to be a light, Father, right now. Help us, Lord, as, as we look around the situations of the world, the wars and, and, and how Satan is raging, Father. But help us, Master, not to back down, Lord, but help us to stand. But we realize that we got to be strong in you, Father, and in the power of your might. So, Father, we come, we yield our minds, we yield our hearts, Father, that you would enable us to stand in times like these, Father. So, Father, we come right now, Lord, perhaps a little bit wounded, perhaps a, maybe perhaps waylaid from announcements that have been made in the last week or so. But, Lord, you see that we are here, Lord. We're here right now, Lord, that we're not going to turn our backs to you, Father. We're not going to run off, Father. We're not going to hang our heads in sorrow, but we're going to look up to thee 
from whence cometh all our help. For we know our help come from thee, Father. So here we are this morning, Lord. We're joyful in our salvation, Father. We thank you for Jesus, that he is our rock. No matter what going on in our life, Lord. We're here right now, Lord. We're not going to give up, Lord. We know, Lord, that the testimony days are coming. That we're going to be able to rejoice right now, Lord. Thank you right now, Master. Guide us right now, Lord. We ask that you enable us to walk so that you might use us, Master. Bless every family that's here this morning. Then, Father, lift up this preacher. We thank you for the word that you're going to give him, Father. Bless him right now, Lord. Bless his life right now, Father. Strengthen his family right now, Master. Be with him, Father. And then, Father, as a church, we ask, Lord, right now that you would uh, give us a unity more and more every day, Lord. We need you, Father, right now that we might be able to live so in the calling that, you've re that you have showed each and every one of us, Master. We thank you right now, Lord. Change hearts today, Father. Bless somebody that they would leave here with a changed soul. We ask this, Master, in the strong and powerful name of Jesus. And then, Father, we thank you, Master, for our gifts, our offerings, our tithes as we are going to give. We ask, Lord, right now that we know that you're going to use it for the body of Christ and for your kingdom, Lord. We ask this in the, in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And we say thank you. Amen.
Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. And my Redeemer, this we ask in the blessed, powerful, almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Listen, on a, on a day like today when uh, we have been blessed with such cultural um, interpretations <clears throat> and presentations, I dare not be labor the hour. Uh, so instead of um, one hour, I'll just keep you 58 minutes. 50, 58 minutes. And uh, then we'll be on our way. We'll be on our way. Uh, uh, I definitely uh, want to say thank you to uh, my interim pastor uh, for this preaching opportunity. Uh, we do have uh, a word on this day from um, the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and we're going to go to the third chapter, and we'll read verses 14 and 15, 
and we will, uh, through our study, we will look at also uh, 10 through 15. Verse 14, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have heard them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And so today, uh, if you would, uh, bear with us just for a moment as we look into a continued commitment. A continued commitment. Listen, as you know, I'm a, uh, I, I serve as a youth coach. Um, various sports um, throughout the district as well as uh, formerly through the summer AAU programs. And I love doing it. I love doing it. But uh, sometimes uh, you, you get into the coaching field and you realize it's really not a lot of glamour and glory that you may have thought it would be growing up. Uh, and it comes with uh, various responsibilities uh, that you may not have been aware of previously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not just about the X's and O's and uh, the training and the off season and uh, the wins and losses, uh, but it also comes with some responsibilities that are not actually related to the sport. Um, and so uh, I'm reminded of uh, a few of those responsibilities that, uh, uh, that come up uh, quite often uh, for the football coaches. Uh, we had a responsibility of maintaining the playing field. Yeah. Uh, we had to maintain the integrity of the field. We had to make sure it was safe and make sure that we did everything we could to provide a great playing surface for the young men. Uh, I'm really just saying a whole lot of words to mean that we had to cut the yard. Yeah, yeah we had to cut the yard. So uh, we, we had to cut the yard, and it didn't matter what the temperature was. It didn't matter uh, uh, how you felt uh, every three weeks or so. If more, if it was raining, you'd have to get on top of one of those zero-degree turning lawnmowers, uh, uh, put on a large gardening hat, put on some sunscreen, and mow that yard. Yeah. And, and so sometimes we as the coaches, we would get tired of this responsibility. We, we kind of got got tired of, we were bored of, we were, we were kind of done with it. Uh, we had grown weary of our responsibilities. Yeah. So what we did was we decided that we were going to fix this problem. Uh, uh, we put our money together, all the coaches, uh, we put our money together, and we said, you know what, we're gonna, we got a good plan. We are going to pay somebody else to do it. Yeah. Pay somebody else to do it. All we right. didn't feel like doing it anymore. We, we wanted to find another way to get the job done. We wanted to make it easier. Uh, uh, we had the guidelines from our director. We're supposed to mow the yard every three weeks. We, well, we, we, we knew that it was our responsibility, but we wanted to do it our own way. And so we figured we'd pay somebody else to do it. Yeah, listen, listen. Here we are today at worship as, as a body of believers. And amongst us all, we have so many responsibilities, so many duties, so many obligations to fulfill. But yet, every now and then, we might feel like doing it a different way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you ever wanted to kind of give up just a little bit? Uh, uh, maybe not the whole way, but, but just a little bit. Have you ever felt like maybe throwing in the towel just for a little bit, uh, finding a different way around your responsibilities. But, but, but listen, I, maybe it was just us, uh, the football coaches that put our money together. Maybe nobody else has had that experience. But Paul is telling Timothy, don't go that route. He said, listen, I have some simple instructions for you uh, uh, that's going to help you maintain this commitment. Uh, you don't have to find another way out. You don't, you don't have to find a different way of doing things. It's time to go back to what you already know. Yeah. Don't try to find a new path. Don't try to go about it the, the, the simple way. Do what brought you here, and that is the word of God. Yeah. And, so, and so today, Paul gives us a few things that we can build upon, a few things that we can use when we, start, when we are starting to get those similar feelings. 
And the first thing we see in our text is uh, uh, as we look uh, a few verses ahead, Paul is setting it up. Uh, we see that he says you first have to have made an investment. Yeah, we got to have an investment. In order for us to continue this commitment, we need someone to invest in us, and we have someone that we must invest in. Paul is addressing his young mentee, his, his pupil, his young minister, to encourage him to finish strong in the work of the kingdom. He, 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 has, he has been along with him on his, his second missionary journey. He, he's ministered with his mother and grandmother. He's trained this young man uh, to be a leader. He has followed him all around. Uh, uh, he actually sent him out to the church at Corinth, and, and now he is a leader in Ephesus. Yeah, they, they, they have built a, 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 an investment relationship. Uh, right. Trust yeah. has been built. A uh, uh, respect has been built. Uh, 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 something like a, like a son or a brother, a co-laborer, a relationship has been built with investment. In verse 10, he says, listen, uh, uh, but you have followed my teaching, my conduct, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, and endurance. He, he, he's saying, I've shown you the examples and you have followed me. Uh, uh, I have brought you along the way and I'm investing all that I have into you. He's investing in the development of Timothy. And, and he said, I, I'm giving you a, a teaching. Assignment. I'm giving you preaching assignments and preaching reviews. I'm, I'm showing you uh, the challenges of leading in a ministry. Uh, in this world that may persecute you and do evil against you, I am showing you that this is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah you, you got to have, you got to have build up uh, an investment in this individual. And, and, and if this individual is going to build an investment, it has to be in the word of God. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we as preachers, uh, uh, I know that there are people that are investing in us. Uh, as, as teachers, I know we are investing, and I know that as members, we are investing uh, in different ways uh, throughout our church ministry. I know that we have a way to invest in others. We got to make sure that we are all invested in Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah sometimes investing is uh, uh, it, going to bring about some so, uh, uh, some ups and some downs. If you know anything about investments, everything is not going to, to be a, a, a gain immediately. You're, you're going to lose some money in that stock market, in those mutual funds. You, uh, uh, but you know that at the end result, if you hold on to those investments, uh, chances are that it's going to pay off in the end. Yeah, I, I remember some of our uh, pastor uh, meetings uh, in the back. Uh, with Pastor Daniels, and, and I think everyone can attest uh, that's been in those meetings, uh, you know that he's investing in you, but sometimes you didn't feel like that, uh, that you got the positive returns. Uh, uh, he had a certain way of letting you know uh, what you did good, but also at the same time knowing <laughs> where you needed to, to pick up the slack. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can remember him telling me, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, buddy, as he was chewing on this peppermint, uh, hey, hey, buddy, yeah, you, 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 you went off on a tangent there, buddy, but, but uh, uh, you, uh, eventually you brought it back on home. I said, he didn't know how low and how high I felt in that very sentence that he gave. He, he, he knew that he was investing in, uh, in the word of God that had been given to me, and he knew that he had to tell it like it is to give the truth as a real investor of God's people. Uh, we can't be afraid to, 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 to give the truth when it's needed. Uh, we can't be afraid to encourage, but also correct. Uh, uh, that's part of investing. There's going to be some gains. There's going to be some losses. But overall, an investment is going to pay off in the end. Yeah, if, if you're going to be committed and you're going to continue this commitment, you, you, you got to be able to have someone that's going to stick with you in the struggle. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul had been through the struggle. He's showing Timothy, you're going to have some struggles along the way. Uh, this is not the first time that we've actually actually seen this. We, uh, we've seen it before with Moses and, and Joshua. Uh, uh, we've seen it with Elijah and Elisha. We, uh, we've seen it with Jesus and the disciples. Uh, uh, it doesn't stop there. We've seen it uh, with Jesus. He says, I will ask my father and he will send you an advocate. It didn't just stop there. We have the Holy Spirit now dwelling inside of us 
Once you accept Christ as your Savior, the investment continues. Yeah. yeah, the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of each and every one of us as long as we believe. Why? Why? So, so we have an investment that goes with us every step yeah. of the way. The question this morning, are we investing in anyone? Yeah. Are, are, we in, are we investing in anyone? Are we, are we giving wise counsel to anyone on this Christian journey? Yeah, yeah, we, we've got we, we've to be able to encourage, and, uh, but we've got to build the relationship in order to also correct. Yeah, it's not just talking. It's not, it's not just saying things, but it's also walking it with them, showing them the example. Uh, uh, listen, I, I, I like to make investments. Uh, I, I've been at it for a few years, not, not really big on the, you know, the, the options and things like that. I don't want to lose too much, but uh, I like to play around with mutual funds and, and things like that uh, and bonds. And, and so uh, I had been doing these things with fidelity. Uh, uh, you know, you could choose Schwab, Edward John, whatever you like, but mine was Fidelity. And, uh, and, but, but recently I said, now, wait a minute. If I'm doing these type of investments, spending my little chump change, it's not much. You see what I have on. I don't have that much money. But, but, but I, if I'm going to be investing my money, why can't I invest with somebody who's also going to be committed to walk this journey with me? So, 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 uh, so I, I asked my fraternity brother, I said, I said, hey, man, can you hook me up with a financial advisor who's connected with the community, who is a minority, who gives back to uh, uh, the local community? So, uh, uh, and, and it made me think. Uh, I, I was like, well, well I got to do this not just with the financial, but also spiritually. We, we've got to be able to invest in someone and, and take a direction and correction from someone who's going to walk with you, somebody who has similar interests, somebody who has your soul in mind, somebody who loves you, somebody who loves the Lord and will share that love with you, somebody who cares about you more than just a number. Yeah, so, so, so I say, say this morning, who are we investing with and who is investing in you. Yeah, Paul uh, uh, may, may, may have been telling this uh, uh, to Timothy just as a warning. We don't, we don't know if, if Timothy ever fell off the path. We don't know what the path looked like, uh, but we do know that Paul had the experience. And we do know that Paul was letting him know that here's, here's the way to stick with it because this road does get along. Yeah, stay, stay in this course, continuing this commitment. You, you got to have someone investing in you and you got to have more importantly you got to have invested yourself in the lord yeah. yeah and the holy spirit will guide you once you have accepted christ you you got to have someone to invest in and you've got to be able to invest in christ we we we, we, we know that you got to have investment you got to have investment to continue this commitment but we also know that you got to have endurance yeah you got to have an investment but you have to have endurance yeah, because this, this, this race, this journey, uh, this walk is not fast. Uh, nobody knows the time frame of what, how long your walk will be compared to the next man, woman, boy, or girl. But no matter what the numbers are, you got to have endurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, we start off with meaningful investment and then we have endurance. You got to know what you're up against. Yeah, Timothy had already, had already uh, uh, known from his experiences with Paul uh, uh, and, and his journeys. He knew that imprisonment was a possibility. Yeah, yeah, he knew that the, uh, uh, Paul and Silas, his big brothers in the ministry, had already experienced beatings. Uh, they had already had uh, 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 things that tried to stop them along the way of spreading uh, the gospel. Uh, and so he was trying to uh, let Timothy know, here are some of the struggles with organizing and developing a church here in Ephesus. Here are some of the things that, that might come along. And he says in verse 11, along with persecutions and sufferings that came to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from them all. Yeah, yeah the Lord rescued me from them all. Yeah. Listen, in Antioch... Uh, um, they were believed 
uh, as they were journeying, Paul, uh, they said that they were blasphemers. And, uh, 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 and some of them said they were uh, uh, contradicting. And uh, 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 the other, t- Iconium, they plotted to stone uh, uh, as they were on their missionary journey. They pl- plotted to stone Paul. In Lystra, the people wanted to praise Paul and Barnabas as Greek gods. Uh, uh, they, they tell, they're telling Timothy, you're going to come up against foolishness. You're going to come up against craziness. You're going to come up against all type of obstacles. But God still will rescue you yeah god will still rescue you and i know that it's not just paul and barnabas and paul and silas and timothy that have been rescued because in this very church we know that you have at some point in your life been rescued from a pitfall along your journey yeah, you, 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 you try to live for him. Uh, you try to change your life for Christ. Uh, you try to do things in a different way, but then somebody still finds a way to put a setback in your life. Some type of evil still creeps its ugly head uh, in the way. But I'm here to tell you that no matter what, if you can build that endurance, God is waiting to rescue you. Yeah, he says these things will come. Uh, he didn't say it's a possibility. Uh, uh, he didn't say that uh, uh, here's a prediction. He's saying that this is a guaranteed fact. Persecution will come for those who serve the Lord, but you have to endure. Yeah, yeah in, this, in this world right now, a, a war and uprisings are uh, gripping our world. We must still endure uh when when the environment around you and the atmosphere is trying to make you go back to to what you used to do and how you used to be you've got to endure when your friends turn their backs on you uh when it seems like the death angel keeps uh pricking his head into your family uh, uh when trouble comes on all different sides you've got to endure yeah. endure is just a word that we we, we got it we want to know how how right. how can one endure when all around you seems to fail, yeah. how can yeah. Yeah. we endure? Well, first, first we got to understand that, that first off, these things shall come to pass, so we should prepare for them before they take place. Yeah, yeah. yeah stay prayed up. Uh, stay vigilant. Uh, keep that, keep that, uh, uh, that candle trimmed and burning. Listen, uh, 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 verse 12 says, all, these, all those who live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. Scripture says, expect it. But then it also says God will deliver you. Yeah, yeah evil imposters will come. They'll be, get worse. They'll be deceiving, and it will get worse. God is preparing you. Prepare for the unexpected. Uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, but you got to train yourself for this endurance. Yeah, you got to train yourself for this endurance. Uh, 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 trying times will get harder, but if you've been training, you can endure of uh, the attacks may become more frequent but you have to train yourself to endure uh, there will be more and more uh, uh, unsound doctoring and drifting away from the gospel all around you but you got to train yourself to endure we have to endure listen uh, uh, on yesterday uh, and, and I'm, I'm still feeling some of the remnants of that all over my body uh, but yesterday I ran a 5k uh, I put it in quotes because there was not much running being done by me. Um, yeah, it was a little, it was, it was, I was in, <laughs> I was in the race. <laughs> they still gave me a participation medal, uh, so they, I was thankful for that. But in that Cowtown 5K yesterday, uh, um, uh, you would not uh, um, enter into such an endeavor um, without some form of training. Listen, they, uh, they, they had flat surfaces along the way, uh, um, and I was, uh, I, I, for a while I was cruising. It, it seemed pretty, uh, pretty easy. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I was almost started to brag a little bit. This is nothing. Uh, that was on the first mile, though. That was on the first mile. We got two more miles to go in a 5K. So uh, somewhere around the middle of that race, it got a little more difficult. Yeah, it got a little more difficult. They, uh, they, they, they have a way of making the race uh, dynamic, and so they don't use flat surfaces on the whole route. Uh, at some point, you have to go up a hill. Yeah, and it got a little more difficult. And not only did you go up a hill, but you'd already been running a mile and a half before you got to the first big hill. Yeah, so fatigue started to, started to, to creep in a little bit. Uh, but I kept on pushing. Uh, I said, I have to 
endure because I know I've been built for this. Listen, I, I've been training uh, 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 for the last few weeks. I've been out there running with the kids. Uh, uh, I tried to, to turn back the hands of time, and I've been trying to run a little bit with the young people. Uh, uh, and they let me know that my age is showing because I typically uh, was unsuccessful in challenging them on a daily basis. But the training was good for me nonetheless because what happened is as I continued to train over the last three weeks, I knew that when I got to this 5K race, it would be just a little bit better. I knew that maybe along the way it would get a little bit harder before it got better, but I knew that my training would be something I could fall back on when it was time to endure and finish this race. Listen, God is telling us in order for us to continue our commitment, don't be afraid when it gets worse. Don't be afraid when it gets hard. Don't give up when it gets difficult. Don't stop when the haters are hating on you. Don't give up when obstacles get in your way because it's going to get worse before it gets better. But as long as you've been training, have you been training? You've been reading that word of God. Have you been training? You've been praying to the Lord. Have you been training? You've been listening and uh, listening for him to speak to you in that quiet voice. Have you been training? You've been continuing to reach out to your brothers and sisters for that accountability partner. And as long as you've been training, when the time comes, you'll be able to endure in that commitment. Yeah. Yeah, the enemy may try to hold you back. The, uh, others may try to stop you along your way, but uh, just be uh, assured that as long as you've been training, as long as you've been holding, your, holding God's hand, as long as you've allowed the spirit to dwell in you, you will have the endurance to keep that commitment going. Yeah, we, we want to stay the course. Uh, uh, Paul is a minister. He's a young minister trying to make sure he does it God's way uh, and make sure... And, and, Paul wants to make sure that Timothy, excuse me, Timothy does not fall off course. He's telling him you got to have endurance. And you got know that I'm investing in you, Timothy. I'm investing in you and you are investing in the Lord. But also not only do we need investment, not only do we have to have endurance, but we must also stand on faith. Yeah. Stand on faith. Listen, listen, we, uh, uh, we, we know that uh, uh, in verse 14 it says, uh, uh, but as for you, as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know those who have taught you. Yeah. Paul gives us here a dividing line. Uh, uh, he says, uh, I don't know about what other people are doing. I don't know the, the, uh, 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 the journey that other people have been on, but I know that what you have been taught. Paul is telling us, listen, uh, there's a dividing line here uh, between the sin, the sinner and those who believe in the Savior. Uh, there's a dividing line because uh, those who are being uh, persecuted and those who are, who are going to fall and those who are going to persevere. Uh, there's those who are going to uh, love the world and those who are going to love the word. The thing is, Paul is saying you have a choice right now and it is to stand firm. Plant your feet down and keep the faith. He says, you've been taught and you are not new to this. Yeah, yeah you've been equipped. You've been called out. Uh, you've been chosen for this and you have the faith because God has faith in you and he is faithful to the end. Verse, verse 15 says, uh, and you know that from childhood you have known the sacred scriptures, which were able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The scriptures hold the scriptures dear he's saying hold the scriptures dear so that you may have the wisdom to continue to allow the spirit to guide you so how do you keep this faith how do you keep the faith on this journey first off you must hang on to the scriptures trust in the one who brought you this far trust in the God of your salvation yeah, God, you got to get back to the foundation that God have la has laid for you. That's my prayer life. That's my, my study time. That's my praise and worship. Uh, that's me submitting myself to his will and not my own. That's me calling upon his name and not calling upon man. To stay the course, you got you to gotta have that substance of things hoped for <laughs> and the evidence of things unseen. It may take a leap of faith. Yeah, a leap of faith. Uh, 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 and the thing about a leap of faith, you don't know where your feet are going to land. 
Yeah, you don't know where your feet are going to land. But because you've been training, because you've been on a road to the Lord redeeming you, because you have been in a consistent pace of training for this moment, you know that no matter if you don't know, you can't see where your feet are going to land, you know that God is not going to let you fall. Yeah, see, God has a track record. Uh, he has a resume. He, he's built up a history, uh, and you know this history. Uh, this history says that uh, uh, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah, he's built up a track record that says uh, he will deliver you from the hands of the enemy. Uh, he's built up a resume that said he will make a way out of no way. And because you believe and because you know these things to be true, you can go ahead and jump into this new season of life you can go ahead and jump into a new level of trust in him you can go ahead and jump into that new ministry that you've been holding back you can go ahead and jump into that new commitment why because god said if you jump i'll catch you and i'll make sure that you don't fall you got to be able to take that leap of faith yeah don't don't leave the path don't don't leave the path if you're starting to to, to, to get back off that path, jump back on. Jump on that path. Take a, take a leap of faith. God has more for you to do. Listen, do you, do you have faith is, is, is our question this, this morning. Yeah, just the size of a mustard seed. That's all you need. Yeah, do you have the faith to move mountains? Yeah, do you have faith that there will be healing? Uh, do you have faith that God will never put more on you than you can bear? Do you have faith that he will increase your financial situation in his own time? Uh, uh, do you have faith that he will promote you into the next phase that he will have you to be in this Christian journey? Yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you have the faith that the enemies will be your footstool, if you have the faith that you can be resilient against all adversity, if you have that faith, then you might know that the only way to receive that faith is to first place your life in God's hand. Yeah, yeah you, you got you to gotta be able to understand that uh, God is the only one that can save you because he sent his only begotten son. Yeah, if you have a need for that faith, then that means you've come to the right place because here is a man uh, in this word of God. All, uh, all instruction is God breathed and is uh, useful for reproof and correction. This, this word of God that Paul is giving to Timothy, he's saying, I can build you up with this word of God, but you got to have the faith that it is true. You got to have the faith that you don't need man because he is the son of man. You got to have faith that whatever you need in Christ, it shall be given. Why? Because God already gave us what we need. God already gave us in his only begotten son. So if you want to be able to build that faith first, you must come confessing that Jesus is Lord. You must come believing that God raised him from the dead. You must come believing that he is your redeeming father. And believe that because of the blood that he shed for you and me, because of his redeeming work on the cross, that you can still push forward. No matter what they may say about you. No matter what obstacles may come your way. No matter how grim it looks to the outside. Know that you serve a God that's pushing you forward on the inside. So no matter what, remember that on the cross, Jesus gave his life. But he didn't stay there on the cross. Because if he stayed there, we wouldn't have eternal life on this day. But because he got up and rose again. Because he got up with all power in his hand. Because he has the, the power of the Father in his hand. All power has been given to him by the Father. And he gives us that same power in the redeeming blood. So if you need a little faith boost, if you need some more training in your endurance, if you need someone to invest in, invest your life in Jesus today. Today is a mighty good day for you to invest in the Lord because everything that you need has been done for you on the cross. Don't ever give up. Don't ever be pushed to the side. Jump back on that path get back into your commitment never say that you have to give up because you don't have to give up because he gave up his life for you and me so never ever feel that it's over there's always a new ending to be written it's not over until god says 
that it's over. So on this day, today is a mighty good day. Give your life to Christ. He will give you the endurance to endure, to keep on pushing on this commitment. If you need someone to invest, invest it in Christ the Lord. He's better than any stock market that you can invest in. Because when you go up, whether you go down, he's right there to pick you up. So on this day, don't give up. Stay the course. Continue that commitment in Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Continued, continued commitment. Amen. Stay the course. Thank you again, Reverend. Amen. The investment. We got to be able to hang in there. Amen. And our faith will enable us to do that. Amen. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. There ought to be somebody there today that, why don't you make a leap of faith that this preacher told us about. Amen. We invite you to make that leap. Why don't you come today? is rejoicing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you again, Reverend. Amen. A continued commitment. Oh, we get waylaid sometimes by what we thought. Amen. But this preacher has told us, stay the course. Stick with the truth. Amen. Stick with God. Amen. Thank you again, Reverend. Amen. While he's catching his breath, amen, we want to remind you that we've got a big month coming. The Lord say the same. The month of March is big. Amen. It's big. It's big. It's coming. It's coming. Stay tuned. Amen. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Amen. You know, our ladies do things in a big way. March is our women's month. Amen. Raise your hand up, Sister Doretta, our president of our women. And I believe our speaker, Sister Sylvia Hill, is she here? Amen. She's our speaker. Stand up, Sister, Sister Hill. Stand up. <laughs> Amen. 
our, our speaker on that day, our co-president with our husband, uh, Deacon Sean Hill of our couples ministry. Amen. Now, we were not able to make it, but we see that they had a big time on yesterday. Amen. Perfect bliss. The Exo Merit Ministry. Amen. And we want to thank our culinary ministry as well and all of you that were able to take part. Amen. So, uh, women have put together a month of activities. And I believe we have flyers around here to kind of clue you in on what's coming up each and every weekend. The theme is not easily broken from Ecclesiastes 4 and 12. Amen. The annual day is the fourth Sunday. Amen. Amen. So let us come, let us support our ladies. Amen. Amen. You know they do things in a big way. Amen. Where would we be? Amen. Without our ladies in the church. Amen. Amen. But where would we be without the Holy Ghost? Amen. Come on and tell the Lord thank you today. Amen. Amen. I believe that's it. I believe our preacher has caught his breath from his 5K. Amen. How far is that? Is that three and a half miles? Close to three and a half miles. Amen. So we have some idea. Amen. So he had enough breath to preach today. Amen. Tell the Lord thank you as he come to give us our benediction. Amen. And please, while he's coming, while he's coming, we still want to keep the church lifted up in prayer from the youngest baby up into the oldest member. Amen. 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 Thank you once again, uh, to Pastor Bryce. Uh, to uh, all those who worship with us uh, this morning, thank you. Uh, also, please don't forget, uh, we do have our tithes and offering uh, to be given as you exit, uh, either exit. So, um, if you would please stand as we dismiss. Let us bow. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless uh, Beth Eden, Lord. Bless us, Lord. As we continue to stay the path with you, uh, continue to let you guide, let you lead, Lord, please touch the youngest to the oldest, Lord. Touch every man, woman, girl, and boy, that they may receive from you a greater than when they walked in, Lord. That they may walk out with greatness that has been placed in them by you, Lord. Let them touch the community, the families in which they reach on a daily basis. Help us to continue to live for you in all that we do, each and every day, Lord. Bless us as only you can. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord again for our fine arts department and our youth.